What is up YouTube? This is Zach, Dream Media Home Theater, and today I'm going to be discussing the Apple TV 4K and the installation of it as well as why it's important to have 4K streaming. If you guys aren't one of my subscribers already, make sure you smash that subscribe button down below and give me a big thumbs up. Alright, let's get into it. Okay guys, so this is the Apple TV 4K and this is the older model um, that was just 1080p. Basically they look exactly the same. The biggest difference is that this does Dolby Atmos as well as 4K and that is important because we want to maximize the potential of your system. You can see this is the theater room back over here that uh, I'm putting it into and we have a uh, Sony 695 and we have a uh, 1030 Onkyo which does support native 4K so we want to make sure that the customer is able to actually stream their content in full 4K because if not what's the point of spending 10 grand on a projector and another 2 grand on a receiver you want to maximize that potential so what we're doing is pulling out that old uh, Apple TV and putting in the new one so that he actually gets the 4K and then he'll also want to activate on his account uh, 4k for Netflix Hulu Amazon all that so that it looks super sharp and vivid So we're gonna pull that out and put the new one in right now one other thing that I wanted to discuss is HDMI's So it's also important that you have the most current HDMI you want at least 18 gigabit per second 4k at 60 frames per second 4 by 4 by 4 which is what we have here So we're gonna pull out the new the old one and put the new one in to maximize the potential of the system Okay guys, so I just plugged in the 4k Apple TV, and this is the first thing you're gonna see on the screen is your language. This is the remote that comes with the unit. Very simple as a trackpad. You just slide back and forth like this, and then you got menu, mute, up and down. It's very simple. So we're gonna select English, United States. This is privacy basically saying, uh, if you wanna use it, sign your life away. You wanna use Siri or not, you can use Siri. That basically just allows you to use voice control uh, with the remote talking to it. You just hit the little microphone there. We're gonna go ahead and set up with the device. This is basically giving you the option to manually enter in all your information or you just grab your iPhone and touch it right to the top of the unit. So we're gonna set up with device and I'm gonna show you how that works. So I'm gonna take the customer's phone here and we're just gonna to touch it right to the top of the Apple TV and it'll pull that information. You actually don't even need to get Sometimes you don't even have to touch it, but basically just get it close. So see how it says set up the Apple TV. We're going to hit set up. It's going to connect and you can see now it's asking me for a code. I'm going to enter in that code 0286. And now what it's doing is pulling the information off the customer's Apple account as well as um, all of the apps and stuff that they've already downloaded and loading that from the cloud onto the new Apple TV. So this saves you at least probably 10 minutes doing it this way. I highly recommend it. So we're still waiting for it to load. It'll take a few minutes, but you don't have to actually enter anything in. So it's a time saver. Okay, this is asking us whether we'd like it to require a password. If you have kids in the home, requiring a password is a good idea. You can rack up a bill pretty quick. Um, but if you trust them or if you have, if it's just you and your wife, then I always hit never require because it gets kind of annoying typing in that password all the time. So my customer's in the room, I'm gonna ask him, what do you prefer, sir? You can do never require for now, just keep it simple. So you can always add in the password, enable that feature in the settings down the road. TV provider, this is um, if you're say using a streaming service like DirecTV Now or something, this customer has DirecTV like a cable box, so we're gonna hit not now. Home screen on every Apple TV, this is cool. So basically you're gonna have the exact same user interface on every single TV in the home uh, versus having to go in and add in whatever apps you want for this particular room. Makes your life a lot easier. Again, it's one of those auto features. This is assigning the name of the room. This is the theater room. The reason you wanna put the names of the rooms is because if you have a bunch of different rooms, with AirPlay you can stream your content right from your phone to the television, audio or video, or both. And having the room label just makes it super quick and easy. Uh, location services is basically just going to pull stuff from around your area to make recommendations. 
I always enable it. This is some screensavers. These screensavers are pretty cool. I would automatically download them. They're in full high res 4K. And whenever you're not using it, it just gives you something nice to look at rather than the menu. Analytics, this is up to you whether you wanna share it with Apple or not. The customer is gonna opt out on this one. Terms and conditions, this is something that's not optional. We have to agree if we wanna use it. Okay, so now we have the main menu to the Apple TV and you can see it's already pulling in his apps that he had on the other Apple TV. I love this feature, super cool. So while those download, I'm gonna go into some of the settings for you. One thing that I always do is go to general and sleep after. These things consume no energy, so there's no reason for it to sleep. You can just hit never, and that way you don't have to wake it up every single time you use it. Especially if you have a control system. With the control system, you'd have to hit like menu or up or something uh, to get it to turn on. Putting that feature on just makes your life a little bit easier. Um, AirPlay, this is what I was talking about earlier. See how it's labeled theater room? Well, you can enable AirPlay or disable it if you don't want to be able to use that feature, but I really like it. Basically what it allows you to do is slide down from the top of your screen and see screen mirroring right here. You can hit home theater and then it displays what's on your phone on the screen. Pretty sweet. We're gonna go ahead and stop mirroring. Um, remotes and devices, you can add in like Bluetooth remotes as well as uh, app control here or pair your remote that comes with it. We're going to go ahead and um, not mess with that because he does have a control system that is controlling it through infrared. So there's a little sensor that goes over the front of the Apple TV. Control TVs and receivers. This is cool if you have a television that has CEC. What that allows it to do is whenever you turn on, say, the television, it'll automatically turn on the TV. And it also will send information back to the television so, like, you could volume up and down right from the Apple TV remote. There's some other functionality as well, but we're using a control system, so that's not necessary. It's kind of limited what you can do with the Apple TV remote, but it is nice that it has some control aspects to it. Now, audio and video, we want to... Uh, select the uh, format that we're going to uh, output to the projector. You got 4K SDR and 4K HDR. 4K HDR is going to be a little bit dimmer overall. So on a lot of content, I actually prefer 4K SDR, uh, but um, I'll show it to you both way ways. Uh, dynamic range, basically high dynamic range is going to just give you better black levels, more rich. Um, but it also makes the overall picture darker. So there's pros and cons to both, um, which I'll, I'll show you guys a comparison of that later. Um, here's your chroma rating. It's what the Apple TV supports. We want four by four by four. What it's doing right now is just checking to make sure that everything will pass through on the 4x4x4. Which I may need to go into the receiver settings and enable uh, enhanced mode for HDMI. Okay, so I have gone into the settings on the receiver and output it to enhanced 4K to pass through as well as we have selected the highest rating uh, for the HDMI that's possible, so we're maximizing the potential of the system. So next, I'll uh, play a quick demo for you guys, but this kind of concludes the quick setup of the Apple TV. There's also, if you're an Android user, another component that I would recommend. For Android users, the Roku Ultra is a really good unit. It does 4K as well as uh, Dolby Atmos pass-through. But if you're an Apple user, I highly recommend the Apple TV 4K. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it informative. If you liked it, give me a big thumbs up and make sure to smash that subscribe button down below. This is Zach with Dream Media Home Theater. Thank you for watching.
So this is just a little demo of the image quality that you can expect with the Sony 695 with a Screen Innovations uh, Series 1 white matte screen. And see with the lights off, it really looks nice. Very, very crisp and clean, colors are popping. With a slate ALR screen or even a like a pure gray, you may get a little bit better contrast out of it. But this this screen is one that the customer owned from the prior projection setup, so we're going with it for now, and it looks really good. Massive upgrade. Would you agree? Mm. Can you kick on the lights for me. So this is where this screen suffers a little bit with some light in the room. But still not bad. That's better than one. Mm hmm Extremely rich, super dark contrast, colors are vivid, this is a great projector.